Welcome to this WiseAL Report Builder tutorial. In this part of the series, we're going to look at aggregate functions and how you can control the scope over which they operate. We'll start with a quick recap of using basic aggregates and how you add those to a table and explain how they work based on their default or current scope. We'll then move on and look at how you can specify a value for the scope parameter of an aggregate function to modify the range of rows over which it operates. And we'll then use that technique to compare detail rows in a table with group aggregates and compare detail rows with table aggregates. We'll have a short section that explains how filters affect the results of your aggregate functions. And the final part of the video is a quick look at the dataset scope. So let's get started. Here's an example of the type of thing we'd like to create in this video. This table shows a list of films and their runtime in minutes, and we've grouped the films by the genre that they belong to. We have a column which shows the individual runtime for each film, and at the bottom of that column, an average of the runtimes for all the films in that particular genre. We then have a column which compares the individual film's runtimes against the average for the genre, and we can clearly see with a bit of conditional formatting here whether the film is shorter or longer than average for the genre. We then have another column which compares the runtime for each film against the average runtime for all of the films in the entire table, regardless of which genre the film belongs to. At the bottom of that column, we've got a comparison for the average runtime for all the films in that group with the average runtime for all the films in the entire table. So doing this sort of thing requires careful manipulation of the scope over which the aggregate function is applied, but that's the sort of thing we're going to try to create. To get started, you'll need a copy of the WiseAL Movies database, and if you don't already have that installed, you can have a look at this video which explains exactly how to get it set up, and you'll find a link or two in that video's description which you can use to download any required files. Assuming you've done that part already, I've got a blank report builder report waiting for me, so I'm going to go over here and create a new data source which connects to that movies database. I can right click the data sources folder and choose add data source. I'll call it movies and then I'll use an embedded connection pointing to a Microsoft SQL Server. I can click the Build button, and then in the server name box, I'll type in a shortcut to my local host, dot backslash, and then the name of the instance of SQL Server I'm going to connect to, which in my case is SQL 2017. I can then use the drop-down list down at the bottom of the dialog box to select the Movies database, click OK a couple of times, and there's my data source created. Now that we have the data source, we can use that to create a data set. So I can right click on my movies data source and choose add data set. I'll call this one films and then use the query designer button at the bottom of the dialog box to get a bit of help with constructing my select statement. I'll expand my tables folder and then I'll head to the film table first. I'd like to select the films title, runtime in minutes and Oscar wins. And then from the genre table, I'd like to select both columns. I want both the genre ID and the genre. So the easiest way to do that is just to tick the box next to the table name, and that will select all the columns in it. I'd then like to add a filter so that I only see films with at least one Oscar win, just to keep the number of rows in this report a little bit uh, smaller. So I'm going to click the Add Filter button over here in the Applied Filters section, and then I can change the field name that's being used to Oscar wins change the operator to is more than or equal to, and in the value box, I can type in the number one and press enter. Having done that, I can click OK a couple of times, and there's my data set created. Now I'd like to create a basic table which shows the results from that data set. I'll start by tidying up the report. First, I'll get rid of the title text box, and then I'll right click into the page footer and choose to remove that. Then I can right click into the body of the report and choose insert table. And then I can assign the title, the Oscar wins and the runtime minutes field to the basic table. Now I'd like to group the table so that the films are organized by which genre they belong to. I can do this in several different ways, but for this video, I'm going to right click on the details object in the row groups panel, choose add group and then choose parent group. Initially, I'm going to pick the genre field, the one which has the text description of the genre name. This is to make sure that I see the genre name in the new column that will be generated, and the genres will be sorted alphabetically by their name. I'll also include a group header and a group footer. The footer is somewhere that we can display the average for the genre. Then I can click OK. So I'll see my new column appears with the value of the genre field displayed in it. 
just because you may get better performance when you perform grouping rather than using the long text description, use the underlying ID numbers instead. I'm going to head back to the new genre group that I've just created by right clicking on it in the groups panel, choose group properties, and then change the group on expression to use the genre ID. That won't affect the value that's displayed in the column, nor will it affect the sorting that's been applied automatically. That will still be based on the alphabetic sort order of the genre names. I'll click OK at that point, and then just some very basic formatting to make sure things will appear as I intend. I'm going to select all the cells in the table, and then just switch away from the default font to any other font, and then back to the default font, and that's just to avoid this text rendering bug which you may have encountered previously. Sometimes when you run a report, it doesn't display all the text in the table, but switching the font from the default to another and then back usually fixes that. I'm also going to modify the, um, the column width of the title column so that I can see the full film title on one single row. Highlight the header row, maybe do some basic background formatting for that, and then we can have a look at the results. So if we run the report, we should end up with a basic grouped table showing the list of all the films, their runtimes, grouped by which genre they belong to. The next thing I'd like to do is add an average Oscar wins and an average runtime minutes to the bottom of each genre group. Doing this is really straightforward and we've used this technique in multiple previous videos, but just as a very quick recap, if I switch back to the design view, I'm going to select any single cell in the table just to expose these symbols on the left hand side on the row selector buttons. So you can see that we've got the details item here indicated with the three horizontal bars symbol. So that means that that row will be repeated for every single row in the data set. The other two rows that are part of the group, so still sitting within this bracket symbol, the genre group, don't have the details symbol. So that means that they will appear once for each group that's generated by the genre field. If you choose a numeric field on a non-detail row, it will automatically apply an aggregate function to it. So let's go to the cell just below the Oscar wins detail cell and use the field selector button to pick the Oscar wins field. You'll see that it immediately generates a sum of Oscar wins, which isn't quite the one that I wanted, but changing it is really straightforward as well. We have a few choices here. A simple way to do this is to click on the word sum and then right click on it and choose summarize by and then switch to whichever other aggregate function you want to use. So here I'll choose AVG. We can do the same thing then for the runtime minutes. So this time I'll pick the runtime minutes field from the bottom of the runtime column. And again, it creates a sum of runtime minutes to begin with. An alternative way to modify the aggregate function that's applied, you could right click on the cell and then choose expression. And that will open up the expression builder in which you can simply modify the function that's been used. So rather than using sum, you could pick any of the other aggregate functions. If you weren't sure which aggregate functions you have available, you can expand the common functions category, choose aggregate, and then you'll get the full list displayed there. Here I'll just type in AVG, it's nice and simple to spell AVG, there we go. I can click OK, and then I can have a quick run of the report just to have a look at what results I end up with. A bit of formatting would be nice, I think reducing the number of decimal places perhaps down to two. I can do this to both cells at the same time, but in order to make that work I'd need to make sure I can see the properties window. So I'm going to head over to the View tab in the ribbon and tick the box for the Properties window, which will then appear at the right hand side of the screen. Then I can select both cells which contain the average for the relevant column. In the Properties window, I can scroll down to find the Number Format property. And in there, I'm going to type in a number format of 0.00. .00. So that will show all the numbers with two decimal places. Okay, having done that, I'll maybe apply some very basic labeling for that row as well. I'll call that average. Um, and I want it to say average four, and then the name of the genre. So I'm gonna say average four, and then I can type in a reference to the genre field by opening a set of square brackets, type in the genre field, and then close the square brackets. So that will look like so. Having done all that, I can maybe just change some basic background colors to make that stand out a little bit and then run the report, and there we go. Slightly easier to see the average Oscar wins and runtime minutes. 
the average functions we've just added automatically work out which rows they need to use to calculate their results based on the scope in which the function sits. So for example, the average runtime for action movies here, 125, only uses the rows from the same scope in which the function is, is sitting currently. So that's why the average for action movies is a different result for the average for adventure movies and for animation movies. It's the same exact function, it's just using a different scope to calculate the result. And that's true for all aggregate functions. All aggregate functions use a scope, and unless you specify otherwise, it uses the current scope in which the function sits. Just to demonstrate that a bit further, let's add a new row to the bottom of the table, which will calculate an average Oscar wins and an average runtime minutes for all of the films in the entire table, regardless of which genre they belong to. To do that, we can head back to the design view and I need to insert a new row at the bottom of the table which does not belong to any current group, so not the details group nor the genre group. To do that I can right click on the row selector at the bottom of the table, choose insert row and then choose outside group below. So we'll see that that new row comes along with no symbol included on it, it's just a blank empty grey box and that indicates that it doesn't belong to any group. I'll type in a quick title here, I'll call this Average for All Films, and then we can simply include the Average Oscar Wins field again, so I can select from the field selector here, I can choose Oscar Wins, that will give me a sum, and then I can select Sum, right click on it and choose Summarize by AVG, and then do the same thing for the Runtime Minutes, so I can use Runtime Minutes, change that from a sum to an AVG, I'll want to make sure I've applied the same number formatting, so I'm going to highlight those two cells, and then in the Properties window, scroll down to the Number Format property, and again type in 0, 0.00 for the number format. Having done that, I'll just modify the background colour of that title cell there as well to make it stand out a little more, and then if I also change the font colour, and then run the report, if I go down to the very last page of the report, I should now see an average for all films, which shows the average Oscar wins and average runtime minutes, regardless of which genre the film belongs to. So relying on the default scope of an aggregate function is usually really helpful. It means we can add a basic aggregate function, such as average runtime minutes, put that function in multiple different places and it will calculate the right result based on the location of the function itself. In other situations however that's not quite so helpful. If we go back to the example I showed right at the beginning of the video, if I wanted to be able to compare the runtime for each movie against the average runtime for everything in the same genre, then I can't just rely on the default scope of the average function. And just to demonstrate that, let's have a quick look at adding a new column to our table, which will calculate the average runtime in minutes for each detail row. If I switch back to the design view, I'm going to add a new column to the right hand side of my table. And on the details row, so the row which has the three horizontal bars on it, I'm going to add the runtime minutes field. Annoyingly that will provide me with a default aggregate sum of runtime minutes for the two cells below it. I'm actually going to get rid of both of those, so I'm going to highlight both cells and then hit the delete key to clear those. And then I'm going to apply the average function to the detail row. So when you select a field on a detail row it doesn't automatically assign an aggregate because it's a detail row, there's nothing to aggregate, it's just, it simply represents one single row of data. But you can, if you wanted to, you could create an aggregate by right clicking on the field and then choosing Summarize By, and then in this case I'm going to choose AVG. Having done that, if I run the report, we should be able to see that the average runtime minutes for a detail row is just exactly the same as the runtime minutes for that detail row. So what we need to do is modify the scope over which that average function is being calculated. I want to tell this function to calculate the average for everything in the current genre group. To do that we can head back to the design view and then we can right click on the cell which contains the average I've just generated and then choose expression. 
So there's no simple way to do this using a basic right click menu option. Here we have to modify the expression itself. Here's the example of the basic average function then. You simply pass in a reference to the field whose average you're trying to calculate. If you have a look in the common functions category and choose aggregate and select any of the basic aggregate functions, AVG just happens to be the default. You can see in the examples in the bottom right hand corner there that there are various different options you can use. So the first item at the top shows the basic example, the one we've just created. The second one shows that you can reference a field and then specify which group or which data scope you want to apply the average function to. And that's the sort of thing we're about to do. So we need to know the name of the scope we want to apply the function to. You can use various different things here. In this case, we're going to use the name of the row group called genre. You have to pass that in as a string. So if I click at the end of the expression, just inside the closed round brackets, I can type in a comma to move on to the second parameter. And then in some double quotes, type in the name of the group, which we've just established is called genre. If I then close the double quotes, and then click OK. When I run the report again now, we can see that the average for every film in the action genre is exactly the same as the average for the overall action genre. So it's 125. You see the same thing applies to the adventure group. It uses the exact same value for every single film in the adventure group and so on and so on and so on. To calculate the final result for this column then, all I need to do is subtract that number from the individual runtime minutes for each film. So back to the design view, we can right click on the cell which contains the expression and choose expression. And then just in front of the average function, I can reference the runtime minutes field. So I can head to my fields list, double click runtime minutes, and then enter a minus symbol to subtract the average for the entire genre. Having done that, I can click OK, and then a final look at those basic results, and we will see positive and negative numbers indicating whether a film is longer or shorter than the average. I'd just like to modify the formatting of these numbers, first of all, to reduce the number of decimal places down to two, and also to show a positive symbol in front of positive numbers. So back to the design view, I'm going to select the cell containing that expression, and then I'm going to scroll down the properties window to find my number format property. Here I'm going to specify a different format for both the positive and the negative numbers. So in custom number formatting, the first bit of the format you create specifies how positive numbers will look. And I'd like my positive numbers to appear with a plus symbol in front of them, followed by two decimal places, so plus 0.00. .00. To move on to the negative part of the number format, I can then type in a semicolon symbol and then type in a minus symbol followed by 0.00. .00. So that ensures that negative numbers appear with a minus symbol in front of them. Having done that, I can simply run the report again and I'll now see that my positive numbers appear with a plus, negative with a minus, and everything has exactly two decimal places. We could also apply some conditional formatting to distinguish the positive numbers from the negatives by changing the colours of the two types. To do that, probably the easiest way is to write an if function which tests the value stored in that particular text box in the table. And to do that, we need to know what the name of that text box is. A fairly easy way to find out is to select it and then just look up at the top of the properties window and it tells you the name of the report item. So it's called runtime minutes three. If you wanted to, you could modify that name using the name property to make it something more descriptive, but I'm going to stick with Runtime Minutes 3. In fact, I'm just going to copy that name to the clipboard by highlighting it and hitting Control c to copy. What I can then do is find the Font Color property. So in the Properties window again, there's a Color property in the Font section, which is currently set to black. If I then click on the drop-down arrow, I can choose Expression. I'll then replace the current value sitting in there and I'll start by typing in or selecting the if function from the common functions category. So I can go to common functions, program flow, and then double click the if function.
What I then want to do is reference the value of a particular report item. So I need to type in the word report items followed by an exclamation mark and then the name of the item I'm interested in, which I'm just going to paste in control and V runtime minutes three followed by dot value. So at this point, the expression should look like so. I then want to check if that value is greater than or equal to zero. So I can type in greater than or equal to zero, followed by a comma, and then I can head to the constants category in the category list to pick the color that I want to use. Here I'm going to go with blue for the positive numbers, followed by another comma, and then maybe orange or maybe tomato for the negative numbers. If I then close the round brackets, the final example looks like so. And then I can click OK, run the report again. And now I've got conditional formatting for that particular cell for the average runtime minutes. So we've compared the runtime in minutes for each film with the average for the genre the film belongs to. Let's move on now and compare the runtime in minutes with the average for the entire table. Again, that just requires manipulating the scope over which the average function is calculated. So let's head back to the design view and I'm going to insert a new column to the right hand side of my table. But I'm not going to choose the runtime minutes field this time so I don't have to delete the sums that will be automatically added for me. I'm going to right click into that empty box in the detail row and choose expression. So the first thing I want to reference is the runtime minutes for the individual detail row. So I can head to my fields list and double click the runtime minutes field. From that, I can then choose to subtract the average of the runtime minutes. So I can type in AVG, open some round brackets, and then double click the runtime minutes field again. Now I want to type in a comma, and then I need to specify the name of the scope to which I want to apply the average function. What I'd like to do is reference all of the cells in the entire table. So I want to set the scope to be the name of the table item. It's a fairly good guess that if this is the first table you've created in the report, its name will be tablex one So I'm going to take a bit of a guess here. I'm going to type in some double quotes. Type in tablex one close the double quotes, and then close the round brackets. So the full expression should look like so. I'm going to click OK, and then I would like to check that I've got the name of my table X correct. A simple way to do that is just to drag a, a rectangle around part of the table, and it will tell you what its name is. And as it turns out, I've got it wrong. It's called table X2. So I could cheat here. I could do one of two things. I could either go back to my expression and update its name so it says tablex2, or I could just modify the name property of the table itself. So I'm going to change that back to tablex1. Having done that, I can then run the report and I'll now see that I get a comparison of the um, runtime minutes compared with the average for all of the cells in the table. The conditional formatting has been copied across, which isn't actually exactly what I wanted, so we'll modify that in a moment. I also want to modify the, uh, the, the decimal places as well as adding the plus symbol in front of positive numbers. So let's head back to the design view and we'll sort out the basic number formatting first. Probably the easiest thing to do is head back to the previous cell so the runtime which compares against the average for the genre. Then use the properties window to find the number format you created. And then you can highlight and copy that. Then select the new cell that you've got your expression in. Scroll downwards to find your number format property and then simply paste that part in. So if I run the report again, we'll now see that the numbers look a little more readable. The conditional formatting isn't working correctly. That's simply because the conditional formatting has been copied directly from the previous column. So essentially anything that is a positive number in this column will format the corresponding value in this column in blue. And that's not quite working correctly because there are now some negative numbers 
highlighted in blue. This should be a fairly easy fix. If I switch back to the design view, if I can find out the name of this new text box that we've created, then I can do that again by selecting it and looking at its name property at the top here. So that's called text box 46. Again, I could modify that to have a more sensible name by finding the name property in the properties window and updating that to something more sensible. But for now, I'm just going to copy text box 46 from the name property, find the font color property, click on the drop down arrow and choose expression. And then I can simply modify the name of the report item that I'm looking at. So rather than runtime minutes three, I can paste in text box 46. So the entire expression looks like so. If I then click OK and then run the report again, now I'll get the color coding working correctly based on the average runtime for all the films in the table. At this point, I think it would be helpful to label our two new columns so we know what's being compared. So I'd like this first column to say runtime versus average for the genre that we're sitting in, and this column to say runtime versus average for all films. This is another place where scope has an effect on what we're allowed to do. If we have a quick look at the example I showed earlier on in the video, the column heading in for each genre says runtime versus average and then for the genre name, so for action, for adventure and so on. Based on the current setup of our table, we can't yet do that. If I head back to my design view for this report, if we look at where the current headers are sitting, if I click into a cell in the table, we can see that these are outside of any group scope. So I'm not within the genre group. I can't therefore reference the individual genre names. So what I think I'm going to do is move my column headers from the static row at the very top of the table into the first row of the genre group. I'm going to have to move my current genre name down a row. So in order to do that, I'm going to select that cell which currently spans all three rows, and then I'm going to split those cells into three separate ones by clicking the split button on the toolbar. I'm then going to highlight the top row of column headers and then press Ctrl and C to copy those and then click into the first cell within the genre group. So the one at the top of the bracket symbol and press Ctrl and V to paste. I then want to redisplay the name of the genre on the next row down. So I'm going to select the genre field and then I'd like to merge those two cells together. So I'm going to select them both and then click merge. Finally, I can delete the top row of the table entirely by right clicking and choosing delete rows. And then just have a quick look at the results of that. If I run the report, we should now have a separate header section for each genre. So one for action, one for adventure. Now that we've done that, we can modify the column headers for each group by referencing the genre name. So let's head back to the design view and then I'm simply going to click into that cell. I'll edit the text to say runtime versus AVG4 and then in square brackets, type in the name of the field I'm interested in. So this time it's genre. So the final result should look like so. For the next column along, this is nice and easy. This is just runtime versus average for all films or AVG for all films. So this is just manually keyed and there's nothing to reference there in terms of fields. I'm just going to change those column widths a little bit to try to make sure we don't use too many rows to, uh, to type in the section titles. And then if I run the report, we've got a separate unique title for each genre. For the final calculation, I'd like to compare the average runtime for a single genre against the average runtime for all films and place the result in the bottom right hand corner cell for each group. So to do that, it's just an extension of what we've done so far. I need to select the relevant cell in the table in the first place. So that will be the last cell in the genre group. So on the bottom row in the rightmost column, I can then right click and choose expression. 
This time I need to refer to the average runtime minutes and then subtract from that the average runtime for all the films in the entire table. For the first average, I don't need to specify the scope because my calculation is within the genre group. It's not on the detail row, it's within the group row. I don't need to specify the scope, it will be done automatically. So I can simply type in AVG, open some round brackets, head to my fields list, double click the runtime minutes field, and then close the round brackets. So that will automatically calculate the correct average based on the scope in which it sits. I can then subtract from that AVG, open some round brackets, runtime minutes, followed by a comma, and then I can type in the name of the table which um, I want to reference for the scope. So again, I called this tablex1, so in some double quotes I can type in tablex1, close the double quotes and then close the round brackets. So the final expression looks like so. Having done that, we can click OK, run the report, and apart from the formatting, which I can tidy up quite happily, we've now got a comparison of the average runtime for the genre against the average runtime for all the films. Changing the formatting is nice and straightforward again, back to the design view. We can select any cell which has the current custom number format, and we can copy and paste that from the number format property. So I'll do that fairly quickly. And then equally easily, we can copy and paste the conditional formatting to get the different colors. If I switch back to any other cell which has this font color if function, I can click into that property, highlight all the text and copy it, select the other text box, and then find the font color property, and then paste that in. Of course, there is one change we'll need to make, this previous text box was called text box 46. The new one in my case is called text box 47. So I just need to modify the expression so that it references report item text box 47 rather than 46. If you find it easier to do this in the expression builder, then simply click on the drop down arrow and choose expression. And it's probably a little easier to modify in here. So the final result should look like so. If we click OK, and then run the report, we'll have a slightly neater looking result showing the comparison of average runtime for the genre against average runtime for all the films. It's important to realise that the items in a particular scope can be affected by filters which were applied to the scope. So for example, we've compared our individual films runtimes against the average for all of the films in Table X1. But what if a filter affected the number of items displayed in Table X1? So just a few quick values to note at the moment. The average runtime of films in the action group is 125, which is 8.57 minutes shorter than the average of all films in the table. And if I switch to the very last page of the report, the average runtime for all films in the table is 133.57. If we switch back to the design view, I'd like to add a filter which shows only films with at least two Oscar wins rather than just one. So to do that, I can click into a cell in the table, right click on one of the grey boxes around the outside and choose Tablex Properties. If I then head to the filters page, I can add a filter based on the Oscar wins field. I'll set the operator to greater than or equal to and then enter the value of two. If I then click OK and then run the report, you can see that the average runtime of films in the action group has increased from 125 to 129. The um, comparison of the average runtime for action movies against the average for all films in the table is now even shorter. It's minus 9.52 rather than minus 8.57. And if I switch to the very last page of the report, that's because the average runtime of all films with at least two Oscar wins is more than that for films with at least one Oscar. So that filter basically affects everything else we do. Every other comparison we make now is affected by the filter we've applied to the table. 
So what if we still wanted to be able to see the average runtime and Oscar wins for all of the films in our dataset, regardless of what filters had been applied to the table? Well, there's one final level of scope we can specify in our aggregate functions, and that's to specify the scope using the name of the dataset. So back into the design view, for simplicity, we'll just add an extra static row to the bottom of the table, which will show the average for all films in the films dataset. So I'm going to right click on the bottom row and choose insert row below. I'm just going to modify this title here to say average for all films in table and then quickly copy and paste part of that into the next box down and average for all films in data set. I'm going to calculate the average Oscar wins first and I'm going to do that by right clicking into the text box and choose expression. I'll say equals AVG, open some round brackets, refer to the Oscar wins field by double clicking on it, type in a comma, and then in some double quotes, type in the name of the data set, which I've called films. I can then close the double quotes and close the round brackets and the final expression should look like so. I can then do the exact same thing to calculate the average runtime for films in the, um, in the films data set. So I can right click into the next text box and choose expression equals AVG, open some round brackets, head to the fields category, double click runtime minutes, type in a comma, and then in some double quotes, type in the name of the data set again, which is films. So having done both of those two things, I'm going to click OK. A tiny bit of very basic formatting, I'm going to select those two cells, find the number format property and say 0, 0.00. So it's got two decimal places. And then if we run the report, so the same filter is still applied to the table. If I scroll to the very last page of the report, down to the bottom, we can see that these averages are showing um, the original average for the entire table, regardless of the filter that's been applied. And I've just experienced the font display bug where I can't see the text I've typed in. Um, just to quickly sort that out, back to the design view, I'll select that cell, switch from the default font to any other, and then back to the default font and a final run of the report to the last page and then I will finally see the title I've typed in. So there we go, some basic ideas for modifying the scope over which your aggregate functions operate. Hope you found some of those ideas useful. Thanks for watching, see you next time.